remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel at NGN TV Nigeria. Click on the subscribe button and be the first to get notifications. On March 18, 2023, through the mandate of the people of Delta State in its gubernatorial elections, Right Honorable Elder Sheriff Francis Orokwedo Uburewuri was elected governor of the oil-rich state alongside his deputy, Sir Monde Oyeme. On the 29th of May, the same year, the duo officially took their oath of office and assumed control of the state as governor and deputy governor, respectively. Amidst the statewide euphoria and jubilation that marked what many described as the dawn of a new era in the state, Right Honorable Burewari reeled out his lofty plans and aspirations for Delta State. These plans, which are encapsulated in his social contract with the people, otherwise known as the Moore Agenda, amongst other things, seeks to ensure rapid infrastructure renewal, equitable distribution of opportunities for all, realistic reforms in governance, and to create a peaceful and secure environment for all to thrive in the state. It is now a year since the governor made these commitments. In the following special package, we take you through the tasking yet thrilling journey of the Oborewari administration in the last one year. <laughs> On the 27th of August 1991, Delta State was created out of the old Bendel State by the General Ibrahim Babengida-led military administration. Delta State, which is also known as the Big Heart, is one of Nigeria's top crude oil producers, making it a key strategic state for the economic prosperity of the Nigerian Federation. Delta State is also endowed with other natural resources, including arable land for agriculture, as well as huge marine resources due to its strategic position on the West African coast of the Atlantic Ocean. Its estimated 5.6 million people, which consists of a burgeoning and enterprising young population, makes it a state to be considered in all sectors and spheres of life. Delta is culturally intertwined with diverse ethnic groups, giving the state a distinct blend of traditional heritage in Nigeria and Africa. These ethnic groups are the Urobos of Delta Central, Isokos, Ishekiris, and Ijaws of Delta South, and the Igbo-speaking Anyoma people, which makes up Delta North Senatorial District. The political landscape in the state since the return of civil rule in 1999 has been dominated by the People's Democratic Party, PDP. Chief Jameson Anife Ibori from Delta Central became the state's governor in 1999. Following his eight-year tenure in 2007, Dr. Emmanuel Eweta Odwaga from Delta South took over for another eight years of PDP rule before handing over to Dr. Ifanyi Okowa from Delta North in 2015. Continuing on that trajectory, despite a tough fight put up by the opposition all Progressives Congress, APC, in the 2023 general election, PDP still came out tops. Today, the cap fits perfectly on Right Honorable Sheriff Francis Orokwedo Borewuri as governor of the great Delta State. He was the Speaker of the State House of Assembly prior to the elections. He had served a record six years in that capacity. The victory of PDP in the March 18, 2023 elections, where the party swept clean 21 local government areas out of the total 25 local government areas in the state, shows the overwhelming popularity of his candidate, Right Honorable Sharif Burewuri. <laughs> Rewari is a grassroots politician and tactician with unrivaled street credibility that endeared him to his people. His strength of character and exemplary leadership stood him out through the electioneering period. He clinched a total of 360,234 votes ahead of his closest rival, Senator Oviomo Agege of the APC, who got 240,229 votes. He eventually took the oath of office as governor of Delta State May 29, The reverberating chants of hope and optimism that marked the day echoed through the length and breadth of the state.
stemming from his deep understanding of the issues and problems battling for the soul of the big heart state, especially the huge infrastructure deficit across all communities in the state, Governor Burawari crystallizes development blueprint in the heart of all and sundry. The governor restated his commitment to his more agenda of pursuing meaningful development, opportunities for all, realistic reforms, and enhanced peace and security for all Deltans, regardless of their status, cultural or political leanings. The new government is supposed to advance the state through the more agenda, which stands for meaningful development, opportunities for all, realistic reforms, enhanced peace and security. With a resolve to do more, to advance the state to new heights in leadership and social economic development. I stand before you today filled with hope and confidence about our future. Governor Borewuri then settled down to work with the appointment of a vibrant executive council. He also appointed heads of department and agencies and inaugurated boards and councils that will help his administration in translating his more agenda social contract with Deltans into reality. His Excellency, there's an existing agenda that is known to Deltas, which is the more. By the special grace of God, we will all key into it. And appreciating the governor of Delta State, who has found me worthy of this service. The appointment is a call to service. And uh, I'm in a position to serve my people. Like you see the hole in that mall. It's opportunity for all. And exactly what we are going to do. To provide an opportunity for Deltans and Deltans alike. That at the end of our tenor, Deltans would have witnessed a progression. We are going to assist him in all ramifications to ensure that Delta State achieves long-time development. After securing victory in an unprecedented 38 litigations in the courts, challenging his hard-won victory, Governor Burewari then launched out to ensure that all projects inherited by his administration from the immediate past government were completed and that the people of the state derived the most value from the ongoing projects. This showed his strength of character to deviate from the ugly trend by elected officials who abandoned inherited projects for the fear of glorifying their predecessors. This policy culminated in the completion and subsequent commissioning of some of these projects. They include the Opolo Enwe Weru Road in Isoko South Local Government Area, the administrative building and other facilities at the Delta State University of Science and Technology, Ozoro, and the Dennis Osadebe University, Anwai Asaba. 29 network of roads with drains of over 31 kilometer length around Madonna College Road in Asaba and Okpanam area of Oshimili South and Oshimili North local government area, amongst others. Today is another milestone in our determined efforts to ensure that the perennial problem of flooding in the capital territory becomes a thing of the past. We are here to commission total number of 29 roads of 16 kilometer length with accompanying drains of 31.55 kilometer length cutting across two local government areas, Oshimili North and Oshimili South on the Madura College Road and adjoining streets that link to the existing storm water discharge drain on DBS and Cabinet Road through the of Agida. It is a fact that residents in this area can now sleep with their two eyes closed with completion of this project. Under the more agenda of this administration, we are poised to raise the bar when it comes to road and physical infrastructure as well as urban renewal. I assure you that the coming months and years we witnessed as related infrastructural development of the most vital interest and impact. The administration also initiated other high impact projects, among which is the construction of three flyover bridges at the popular NRA Junction, PTI Junction, and DSC Roundabout along the Efrun Patani Road, 
with expansion and improvement works on the section of the DSC MPA Expressway from Efun Roundabout to the DSC Roundabout all around Worry and its environs. This was in fulfillment of the governor's inaugural pledge to give Worry, the state's commercial capital, a facelift. The state government, in conjunction with Julius Bergen Nigeria PLC, performed the groundbreaking ceremony at the commencement of the project. Other projects, such as the installation of solar-powered streetlights and the rehabilitation of the state's internal roads network, are currently underway around the worry axis. These projects also ease the traffic congestion in the area and alleviate the hardship faced by commuters. There will be direct employment opportunities for our people. The upper Erejua to lower Erejua roads in Wari are already completed and are in use. The governor has also prioritized the welfare of the people, especially following the removal of the fuel subsidy by the federal government last year. He implemented some palliative measures to alleviate the economic hardship that Deltans faced as a result of the federal government's action. These include payment of an extra 10,000 naira for three months to public officers, as well as payment of outstanding promotion arrears. A 25% reduction in acceptance fees payable by new students at all Delta State-owned universities, as well as the approval for the payment of more than 674 million naira in bursaries to Delta students. The government, through its 10 billion naira social investment fund, distributed food items and cash support to the poor and vulnerable in the state. It has also scaled up the number of direct beneficiaries of Delta COVID-19 Action Recovery and Economic Stimulus Program from 36,353 to 110,841. Just recently, the governor launched the More Grant Scheme for petty traders, artisans and female entrepreneurs with over 5,000 beneficiaries. The More Grant Scheme represents a beacon of hope and the catalyst for positive change as the program provides critical resources that will help you scale your businesses and improve your livelihoods. I feel very happy. I'm grateful because this will go a long way helping me in my business, in my establishment. And we will try our best to see that we will use it to train other persons to see that they will be a beneficiary of this program also. In the last one year of his administration, Governor Burewuri has clearly showed and demonstrated respect for the principle of separation of powers between other arms of government in the state. He has supported both the judiciary and the legislature in carrying out their constitutional duties and responsibilities. He increased the pace of construction work at the new state high court complex to ensure that judicial staff have a suitable working environment. The project will be commissioned in the coming days as part of activities marking his one year in office. At the local government councils, their leaders attested to the complete financial autonomy the governor has granted them to run their affairs. One major attribute that makes me proud of this noble state is non-pifering, non-interfering with the local government forms. To improve healthcare delivery at the grassroots, the governor approved the rehabilitation of 260 primary healthcare centers in the state and gave the go-ahead for the resumption of free maternal and under five child health care programs in the state. Stemming from the governor's stance on alignment of all programs and projects of government units with the policy trust of the administration, a state executive council retreat for heads of government ministries, departments and agencies was convened. During the event, Governor Burewuri reiterated his administration's commitment to prudent and judicious use of scarce government resources in service delivery across the underdeveloped communities and sectors of the state. It is my expectation that this forum provides a pathway for us to deliver on the promises of the more agenda true physical responsibility, synergy among the MDAs, robust community engagement, effective public communication, creative execution of programs, and excellent 
service delivery. Governor Burewari's government went on to design an annual budget that was significantly lower than the budget of the preceding year. A rare departure from the Nigerian trend of having a succeeding budget larger than the previous one. This is even as inflationary forces continue to exist. The infrastructure-focused budget, christened Budget of Hope and Optimism, was passed after two weeks of accelerated consideration that saw the initial estimate of 714.4 billion naira increased to 724.9 billion naira by the state legislature, demonstrating their support for the Oborewari administration in its quest to meet the yearning and aspirations of the masses. I certainly believe that this deal will greatly impact the lives of Deltas and will move Delta State forward in terms of infrastructure and human capital development. Delta State for years has grappled with local and foreign debt burden, running into billions of naira and millions of dollars. However, since he assumed office, Governor Burewari has talked to his guns on his stance of no borrowing. His financial discipline exemplified in his prudent management of scarce resources has become the hallmark of his administration. The policies and programs of the Oborewari administration in just one year in office have sparked a boost in the socioeconomic activities in the state, so much so that local and foreign investors are returning to the state to do business. Three weeks ago, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu virtually commissioned a gas processing plant in Kwale, Ndokwa West Local Government Area, a confirmation of the peaceful and business-friendly environment that now exists in the state. The government has also disclosed that talks are ongoing with multinational oil companies like Shell and Chevron on the need to recommence full-scale operations in the state. In the last one year, the administration has also made significant gains in the areas of intergovernmental partnerships, such as the approval of land for the Federal University of Medical and Health Sciences, as well as the establishment of a College of Health Technology for improved skill set and healthcare delivery. Governor Brewery has also expressed the state's readiness to partner with the African Development Bank to establish an agro-processing zone that will leverage the state's arable land for increased food production. Also in the last one year, the Oborewari administration successfully achieved improved peace and tranquility in the state, except for the recent singular ugly security challenge in Okwama, Ugele South local government area, where four officers and 13 men of the Nigerian army who were said to be on a mission to restore peace in a communal clash between Okoloba and Okwama were gruesomely murdered. While condemning the ugly incident, the Delta State government swiftly intervened to de-escalate the tension that followed and ensure that no innocent person suffered as the army went after the perpetrators. The efforts of the government paid off with the recent withdrawal of soldiers from Okwama, while efforts are ongoing through the Internally Displaced Persons Committee set up by the government to ensure those affected are properly resettled and their livelihoods restored. The overall milestones of the Oborewari administration have been eliciting a chorus of accolades from all quarters. Elder statesman and convener of Pan Niger Delta Forum, Chief Edwin Clark, in a letter to the governor, commended him for improving the lot of the masses in the oil-rich state. Traditional rulers and political leaders, including those from other political parties, have all attested to Governor Burewari's transformative leadership. Right, Honorable Sheriff Burewari, the man who has given this state image we did not know we had. But since he became the governor, he has done a lot for this state. So congratulations. Please, I'm in Labour Party. He has invited me to his office for meetings severally. He has invited the representative of APC and my colleague in Labour Party. To that extent, he has tried as much as possible to bring the parties together. As for security, with what happened in Eugeli and Okumo area, I'm sure you will uh, be impressed about his performance. He tried as much as possible to douse it. A uh, lot of uh, commissioning of projects. And uh, the biggest boost of all is uh, the worry roads that he brought uh, Julius Berger to do. Since the result of this, His Excellency, last year, up to now, 
we have witnessed a lot of changes in this state. And the security situation of this state, we can all agree to it that it has changed. And security is the bedrock for every development you want to talk about in every state. In the Wari Aziz, where I like to use an example where we are from, the usually criminality, kidnapping, robbery, but since he assumed office, it has been relatively peaceful. Since October last year till now, we have not had any element of robbery, kidnapping. Youths and student leaders in the state were also not left out. Um, Governor Sharif uh, is one person I would want to say Delta State needed at this time, and thank God he, he has come in. We've never had it this good. Uh, you know, this is the first time you would find on the 40s in the state executive council. He is somebody that is um, keeping up to his words. During the campaign period, he said it was you to clock, and truly, that's what is happening now. The government of the day is aware of the pains and the concerns of students in Delta State. The, govern the governor and the person of Right Honorable Elder uh, Sharif F.O. Borewere has the students at heart. To complement her husband's efforts, First Lady of Delta State, Mrs. Tobori Oborewari, launched her pet project, You Matter Charity Foundation, to help vulnerable people in the state, especially children with autism. According to the First Lady, You Matter Charity Foundation will advocate for accessible health care and the right to education for every child, women empowerment, elimination of gender-based violence and drug abuse, and carry out various outreaches to impact rural dwellers across all communities in the state. This foundation mission is to make a lasting impact on various aspects of society. Wish my office is riding on to reach out to everyone irrespective of social or health status. Some ongoing projects in the state at the moment include the Okpanam Ibuzo Link Road, Beneku Bridge, Emeva Rugun Road, Orere Bridge, and Model Technical College, Urarukwe, which the governor disclosed will be home to the Urarukwe campus of the University of Science and Technology, Azoro. Others are the all important 162 kilometer Ugeli Asaba Road, which has been under construction for the last 15 years. The road is now receiving accelerated attention. Also under construction is the Delta State International Conference Center, Asaba, comprising a 1,500-seater auditorium and 1,000-capacity ultra-modern banquet hall. A storm drainage channel from Owao Lero and its environs and the accelerated agricultural development scheme at Mbiri Farm and the agro-industrial park Abo Gwashi are amongst many other projects being executed by the Oborewari administration. In fact, the Delta State government currently has a total of 317 road projects, with 76 of them spanning 171.49 kilometers and 85.30 kilometers length of drains initiated by Oberewari's administration, a situation which has turned the entire state into a huge construction site. Governor Sharif Oberewari at a special Thanksgiving service last Sunday organized to mark his first anniversary in office, disclosed that some of the projects are built for commissioning in the coming days as part of activities to mark his first year in the saddle, even as he continues to deploy the resources of the state for the betterment of his citizens and residents alike. Inside the Niger Delta, 